In today's tutorial, I will show you how to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the Open Weather Map API to build this project that you see here. We will now see all of the hourly weather data for this specific city. This tutorial is meant for those who are learning how to use an API to build their own website. So I will be focusing on using JavaScript to make the API call and HTML to display the data that we get back. Also, the UI is purposely very simple so that we can focus more on the JavaScript and not the UI itself. The requirements for this project are that you have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I will also have a GitHub link in the description and in the comments with all the code from this tutorial. To get started, I will switch over to my code editor so that we can now start reviewing the code. I will go over the HTML file first, then JavaScript, and then the CSS file. Starting with the HTML file, we just have our head tag, and we have the basic uh, meta tags that are usually included. Then we have a title tag, which I just named Weather API Project, and then we have a link tag to link our CSS file. Looking here, we have the input field, which is where we type in our city name, then we have the button that we'll call the fetch weather function that I will talk about later. Here I have three different divs. One will just show an error message if the user doesn't type in a city or types in an invalid city. On the next line, we will show the city name. So that will show the hourly weather for whatever city that we typed in up here. And then on the last line, we will just display all the weather information that you see here. And don't worry if you don't understand all of the HTML code right now. Once we review the JavaScript file, it will make more sense. Starting from the top, you will need to populate your own open weather map API key here in this variable. If you don't have your own API key, you can watch the video on my channel named Open Weather Map API Tutorial to get your own API key and to better understand how the Open Weather Map API works. Once you have your own key, just make sure to populate this variable. On lines four through six, I'm just grabbing a reference to these three divs that I mentioned earlier so that we can populate the values later using JavaScript. Going back to the JavaScript file, I will now explain the API call that we're making for this project before I go over the rest of the code so that it makes more sense. Switching over to the open weather map API documentation, this will give us all the details that we need for the API call that we're making for this project. Looking here, this is the actual API URL that we're hitting to make the API call. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see all of the required and optional parameters for this API call. Looking at the code, we're using the app ID, units, and count parameters. App ID is required as that's our API key that we're passing in. Units are just units of measurement. I will be using Imperial in this project, so my temperatures will show up as Fahrenheit. The last parameter is CNT, or the number of timestamps that we'll be showing. In my project right now, I just have it set to 10, but you can increase or decrease this number as needed. Going back to the code, on line 8, I just have it set to Imperial so that the temperature shows up in Fahrenheit. On the next line, I'm just checking if the units are Imperial, and if they are, I'll show the Fahrenheit sign, and if not, I'll just show the Celsius sign. In the next section, I created a function called Fetch Weather. I will skip lines 14 through 16 for now and explain those later. Here I create a variable to represent the count parameter and I'm just setting it to 10. On the next line, I'm just getting the city that the user typed in from the input box. On line 22, I have the open weather map API base URL and then I'm passing in the city that the user inputted, my API key, the units, and then the count. Using the fetch API, I actually make an API call to this endpoint and then I'm returning it as JSON. In this if block, I'm just checking if the HTTP status code is a 400 or 404. And if it is, then I'm going to display this error message saying it's not a valid city and that the user needs to input another city. Switching to the website, I can quickly show an example where if I type in an invalid city, you will now see the error message. Going back to the code, on line 35 to 38, I will be looping through the weather data that we get back. To show you what this looks like, if we go back to the website and look at the console, this is the response that we get back from the API. There's an item called list, and inside the list, each item will represent weather data for the specific hour that we're looking for in the city. Looking at the temp value here, we can see it's 78 degrees, just like we're showing here on the actual website. And if we look at the next item, we can see that we're showing 75 degrees. And this is how we're displaying all the data that you see here. Going back to the code, on line 35, I'm just accessing the response that we get back from the API call. In this case, I just named it data. Then I'm accessing the list item that I showed you from earlier. So this is list. 
So if this was named something else, you would just want to make sure you change it here so you can access all of the items in the list. And for each item in the list, I'm just going to access it here and I'm going to call it hourly weather data. And for each hourly weather data, I'm going to pass in this function that I called create weather description. Looking at the function here, we're going to extract two values. One is called main and one is called DT. Main will represent the main weather data and DT will just represent the date time or the time of the weather data that we're accessing. If we go back to the console and just look at the example here, if we access main, we can see that we get all types of data, such as like the current temperature, the max temperature, the min temperature, and even like the humidity level. If we look up here, we can see the value of DT. And if we look at the documentation, it just tells us it's the time of the data that's forecasted in Unix. Going back to the code here, I created a new div which we will use later. On the next line, I pass in the date time into this function that I call convert to local time. This function will convert the time, which is in UTC, to whatever local time is on your own computer. In the case for me, it will convert to Eastern time. If I expand the function, we can see exactly how this works. First, I just create a new date object and pass in the date time and multiply by 1000 just to convert it to milliseconds. This will automatically produce a new date object to the local time based on my own computer. Afterwards, we will now extract all the values that you see here, such as the year, month, day, and so on from the state object, which is now converted to our local time zone. Then on line 63, we will return a formatted date string in this specific format, just like you see here. Looking at the rest of the code, once I have my converted date and time, I will now update the inner HTML of the div that I created earlier. I do that by modifying the inner HTML of the description, which is a div that we created here. For the inner HTML, I just add a class of weather description so I can modify it using CSS. Here, I'm displaying the current temperature by accessing main.temp. And if we go back to the console, we can see that I'm accessing main and then .temp. And so that's why I'm showing 78 degrees Fahrenheit here. For the time that you see here, I'm just getting the value of the converted date time and getting the substring starting from the index of 10. This is an example of what the converted date time will look like. And so just to get the time, I'm just going to get the substring starting from the 10th index and display the rest of the string. And to display the current date in this example, it's just November 7th. I'm just going to grab the substring from the index of 5 to 10. Once we have this all set up, I will return the entire div. Back on line 36, I will store the div that I returned in this variable called hourly weather data, and I will append it to the weather container. And visually what this looks like is that for each hourly weather data, we would just append it back to the div that has the ID of weather, which is the same one as the weather container. Afterwards on line 41, here I'm just displaying the hourly weather for whatever city that the user has typed in. One last thing to go over is on line 14 through 16. Here I'm just resetting the inner HTML for these three separate divs each time data is fetched for a new city. So that way we aren't displaying old weather data for a city that the user previously searched for. The last thing to review is the CSS file. For the body tag, I just updated a few things such as the font family, the text alignment, the color, and so on. For the input, I just added some margin and padding. And for the weather description, I just updated the text color to white and added some margin. And that is the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.